You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who art ed? Try to spice it. Who art is Mr. Wood <laughs> art ed me? Yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and for this week's Fun Fact Friday, we're going to be talking a little bit about Johannes Vermeer. Vermeer is best known today for painting The Girl with a Pearl Earring. Part of the allure of this painting is the pose. She seems a little caught off guard looking over her shoulder at the viewer. There's a bit of a mystery to this interaction, which has been played up in popular culture with movies speculating about the dramatic story behind its creation. For me, though, one of the biggest mysteries about it is how it was painted. Vermeer painted incredibly detailed photorealistic works. Some actually speculate he may have been using a camera of sorts, even though photography wouldn't come around until about 200 years later. One of the odd things about Vermeer is the small body of work he left behind. While his work was extremely detailed and one can obviously imagine resulted from a slow, deliberate process of a patient and persistent artist... It seems strange for an artist of his skill and stature to have only created about 35 works. That would put his pace at about two or three paintings per year. And while quality takes time, it's hard to imagine an artist achieving that level of quality without years of practice and study producing hundreds of pieces in order to gain the skill to produce the fine art he is remembered for today. One of the things I find really interesting is that there does not appear to be much information about Vermeer's artistic training. While he lived most of his life in the Netherlands, in the city of Delft, his name is conspicuously absent from the records until 1653, when he was recorded to be a, quote, master painter with the Delft Guild of St. Luke. It was kind of the guild of professional artists. Often there would be records of artists studying under other artists, working in another artist's studio, and rising in the ranks. Vermeer appears to have come on the scene starting at the top. This seems like a pretty remarkable accomplishment for the son of an innkeeper who inherited the family business. While it's not unheard of for both artworks and records to be lost to history, the absence of evidence about Vermeer's training has led to some interesting speculation about how he became so good. The most intriguing theory is that he used a camera obscura to help in the creation of his works. A camera obscura would not create a photograph. It would simply project an image that the artist could trace. Basically, the theory is that Vermeer used lenses and mirrors to project his subject so that he could trace it onto the canvas. The technology has been around for hundreds of years, and plenty of artists, including Leonardo da Vinci, toyed with camera obscura. Many of my students have said that tracing something feels like cheating, but many artists would consider the camera obscura or other projectors to be simply a tool, no different from using a ruler to draw a straight line or tape to mask off an area while painting. Some say evidence of the use of the camera obscura can be found in the hyper-focused detail of some pieces, including maps in the background of his paintings, along with the blurring effects of other parts of the painting, similar to the blur that happens because of the depth of field in a photograph. In his painting, The Music Lesson, there's a mirror that reflects the rest of the room. Vermeer included his easel in the reflection, and there's a shuttered window and a mysterious black box that some say is the camera obscura painted into the work. If you want to learn more about Vermeer and his camera obscura theory, there's a documentary called Tim's Vermeer, in which a man with no significant formal artistic training recreates a Vermeer painting using a camera obscura, and the result is stunning. Ultimately, whether due to his eye and freehand draftsmanship or innovation with technology, 
Vermeer was an incredibly skilled artist who created stunning works that continue to capture the imagination of viewers hundreds of years after they were painted. And they'll probably continue to do so for hundreds of years to come. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted? If you found this tolerable, please like and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week in the show notes on Twitter at WoodArtEd and on the website whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.